And welcome back. We're doing it again. It's episode six now, I believe. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Six. Yeah. Last last week was our milestone of fifth episode, and now we're keeping it going with Place Further Than the Universe and Hardcore Henry. Not in that order. You said it yeah. in the wrong order again. <laughs> <Shut It's> fine. <laughs> Does it matter? When Anyways, starting with the movie. <laughs> So yeah, Hardcore Henry, it's the first person shooter movie, and uh, I'm just going to say it right now, I think this is probably the best video game movie ever, in my opinion. You know, you know that's actually honest. pretty fair. I'm going to be honest, if you hadn't told me it was a video game movie, I wouldn't have known. Really? I, I mean, it's I not still... based on any real game. I No, I, I still, the only thing that feels video gamey to me is... Like one of the scenes and the whole first person thing. Uh, if you play a lot of first person shooters like me, which I do not, uh, you would do. see a lot of uh, straight up references to a lot of uh, first person shooter there was stuff. There's like a few things where I noticed. Oh, that's kind of like, I mean, Jimmy as a whole character is, seems like just. Oh, he's, he's like recurring. Jimmy I as a character Jimmy. is just he's NPCs. And <laughs> there's a part when he uh, fixes him in the forest, and he's like, you're going to have to stand up again. And it was totally like he was trying to do like a tutorial sequence or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, just, Jimmy as a character is so cool because it's like he's just this recurring NPC, basically. Yeah. Jimmy was great. I love Jimmy. It. He's the and best. Awesome. Charlotte Copley kills it in that role, man. Yeah. And, like the only thing I know else he's in is like he's in District 9. And I think if you I'm not the, familiar with him. The the cast of this movie is really weird. It was a bunch. I, I think it's a bunch of Russian people that made this movie. And yeah. also Tim Roth. Tim Roth is just sort of in it as Henry's dad. <laughs> oh yeah, at the beginning, you little pussy. You little pussy. The first line in the whole film. Yeah. Which is fantastic. Just that's how it's you open perfect. it. The whole and then we go right into really what good. I refer to as a Bond opening of violence. Yeah, I, I said uh, movie opens with slow-mo violence montage. With, like, the bullet yeah, like, going through the dude's head. And then, like... Except it's a dude getting stabbed with, like, a glass bottle. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, great. yeah, it was the really slow, like... It was all in slow. red. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, no, like... Also, I don't know how some of those opening, effects were done. Worse. Just, like, like, it's just like they were pretty much getting fucked up. Probably just on a dummy. Yeah, I guess, but it was like a really detailed dummy. It was a good, good dummy. Yeah, some of I think it was probably effects. some combination of and, like, CG the and bullet going through the head. It's like that was they're yeah. really detailed. Some of them, I think the knife going through the neck was probably the most obvious fake one. You know? Yeah. yeah. But the others were amazing. Yeah. Also, there's the 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 whole intro. Was just like a complete reference to RoboCop. <laughs> I wouldn't. Yeah. Know. If, I don't know You're if you guys right. noticed. I, I, he's, I just, he's on RoboCop. the table and they're fixing him up. Yeah, that that was the whole yep. intro scene of RoboCop, RoboCop. essentially. Now, now that you say that, yeah, I totally yeah. see it because I've seen RoboCop a time or two, and RoboCop is very good. I I do have basically a whole list of just video game references in this movie. I can just go down it if you want. Uh, give us some. Yeah, go for it. All right. So Something first off, right off the bat, um, because of the way that he doesn't have his voice chip installed, we have silent protagonist, which is just like the number one yep. FPS game trope. And then right after that, you go into like this events sequence where they're like hiding out in the vents, like in like Half Life. Um, and oh, then you know, there's a scene. Yeah, also Metal Gear. There's also a scene where they're running through some guy's apartment. And this guy has like a bunch of FPS game posters. Yeah, he's got he like, like Super a, Hot, Payday 2, two Half Life Boy, 2, Left 4 Dead 2. That. Yeah, this guy really? had like a bunch oh, of video game posters really on his obvious. wall. It's like right behind him. And then as he's like exiting out of the apartment, you see, you can see like most of a Left 4 Dead. Mm -hmm. I seriously didn't notice any of that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like really quick. But uh, if you look in the wall, if you're looking for it, you definitely will see it. I think I, I only noticed the, the Left 4 Dead poster when I first saw the movie. Well, yeah, no, there's a Payday 2 that was, like, it was really obvious to me. Like, it's front yeah. and center. Um, also, I think during a chase scene, there's uh, somebody, like, graffitied the Doom logo onto a wall. It's oh, really, really quick. You have to be looking for it. Nice. 
Were you constantly um, pausing the movie, or did you? No, like, I wasn't lo- it pausing up? it. I just I remember thinking that I saw it in the first one, and then I uh-huh. was looking for it in this one. Got uh, it. This viewing. Uh, there was the whole uh, strip club sequence, which is definitely just a reference to Duke Nukem. That was awesome. Yeah. That was one of my favorite bits. It felt like a light gun game. Oh yeah, definitely. Like because you had the flipping stupid half naked chicks. Yeah, and there's always they're always like help me, and they're like they're you, in the way, and you can't shoot them. Yeah, yeah. That's you're just like, like you'll be running past, and then the bad guys will pop up in mm-hmm. the hallway. That was great. Uh, there was a just all the action is there's a scene where he is he has to fix his own fucking broken arm, which is either like yeah. a reference to Far Cry or a Metal Gear. Yeah, because he does just his arm. Is- like he falls his arms like out of I think it's like a just breaks yeah. his arm back in the yeah I, I think he dislocated his arm or something yeah. or popped it out of its socket something like that um there's also like some robot. some good Easter eggs like uh I noticed in the background of the car when, when they're in the uh one van that has a bunch of computers in it there's just some guy that was playing chess apparently there's like a chess board on one of the monitors <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, another note I had is the whole horse scene. <laughs> oh, my God, I love that. He's, he's, like, he's like, oh, yeah, he's going to get on the horse and chase him, and then he's immediately just gets fucked <laughs> he's off. He's like, I don't fucking know how to ride a horse. This it horse doesn't plays, know me. No, the funny thing to me is, like, it doesn't have a saddle, but it has, like, all the harness on the face, which is yeah. funny. Uh, like, did you can... hear the music they played during that? Oh, um, what were they playing? Yeah, I, I, like, it sounds familiar. What, is that, like, Lone Ranger or something? It's the main theme of The Magnificent Seven. <laughs> That's where oh. I, I recognized it because I played it in flipping high school band. That's funny. Yeah, I, I thought that was really funny because he's like, yeah, we're going to do a horse chase now. And it's no, now we're <laughs> not. Like, I don't know how to that fucking ride great. a horse. Uh, yeah. Hmm, what else? Uh, just... I said, uh, I think this movie overall does a really good job representing ridiculous writing and like scenes of video games. However, I think it's action and fights were so, like, very specific that the viewer watching it isn't just like, well, why would this not just be a video game, you know? There's, oh, yeah, it's no, like, it's the it's problem with a lot of video game movies is like, well, it's like, I'd rather play this than watch it. I think this one is like, well, you couldn't really turn some of these fight scenes into good gameplay without them just being, like, quick time events. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Especially with the factor of, like, changing yourself and your body. Like, I guess the only example I can think of is, like, flipping Bioshock, where you stab yourself every once in a while to get powers, but you, that's not, like, common. You don't do that all the time. What exactly do you mean? Like, ripping your own body open to do something? No, yeah, no, no, something no. Like like that. I've seen that in a few other games. Uh, there's, like, a it's scene in, like... like... I forget what game it is. There's like a scene where like you, you go under under some surgery to turn into like the bad guy. Um, well, I'm talking more guys. like in, okay, so. in gameplay, you don't usually mess with yourself. You usually just interact with things you can see. Yeah. I think that'd be a That's hard it. thing to turn into a game, you know? Yeah, yeah it'd probably be a cutscene like kind of thing though. That right. done is like that's not a thing you could do in a normal gameplay. That's all. QTE stuff. Especially, yeah, like, oh, there's, like, the whole Taking fight scene on the rooftop. Tank crew with a katana. That was great. <laughs> that's still more plausible than Metal Gear. <laughs> yeah, Chucking some true. grenades at it. Yeah, the whole movie, I think the biggest comparisons, it definitely felt like Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid reference. I, I felt like there was a few, but I don't know if it would be a Metal Gear Solid movie. <laughs> Well, definitely not. Well, just I mean, we're going to get one sooner or later. That's true. We are getting one. I hope it's good. That we know of. Ooh, you mean more. <laughs> what? More but, what? Yeah, overall, the action in this is really great, especially considering, like, they had a budget of two million. It was something really of, small. Have you seen the uh, camera setup for this movie? Done in Blender. Have I you didn't seen the... see the camera setup, but I heard I read a lot about it. I highly recommend googling it. It's like, it's literally this weird like setup. This like little helmet this guy has. They custom made it with two GoPros on it, just below his eyes, and then he does all the stunts and like all the shit. 
Well, did you hear about how they did Henry? What do it you was mean? Like a numerous actors. Oh yeah, there's like probably more than one actor. One point. They tried because... a couple of stuntmen, but they'd hurt them so much that because the thing was so heavy that they actually cycled through ten different people. Oh my god! <laughs> Look like because it just was so heavy, there was just constant neck pain. So they kept switching. Like even in some scenes, it's like the director is Henry. I think yeah. Um... I mean, you also need different people for it, because it's like, you know, the same guy that can do parkour isn't going to be the guy that's doing the gunfights. Right. Exactly, yeah. There's a whole building scaling scene. Yeah, he climbs which... up a whole building, and I'm like, that had to be a pain in the ass to film. I, I was like, like I, I was like, that might have been crazy, but at the same the time, this movie was made camera. by a... Sorry, what? Oh, I'm just saying it must have been a pain in the ass, because yeah. you got this dude jumping and climbing up a building with his heavy-ass camera on, and that must have been really yeah. hard. I was like, that must have been a pain in the ass to, f to film, but then again, this movie is made by Russians, and there's <laughs> literally just a subsection of Russia, like, on YouTube, or just Eastern European content of just Russian people hanging from things. Like, they'll climb up large buildings and then, like, grab, like, a fucking thing by one arm and then just dangle off of it for a minute. It's fucking insane. I do like when uh, Henry steals the clothes from like the guy swimming, and then he gets confronted by generic <laughs> tracksuit <laughs> Yeah, that's like, a great yeah, part. Russians, I believe there's a part right after that in like the subway or something when, uh, or like not the subway, but like the underground like market, where you can hear where a guy go like "sukabliat" or something like that. Oh, uh, so, someone actually says it. He, yeah, I, I don't know if he was saying "die" or "bitch," but one of those two words. But, Connor, uh, we're getting yeah, some also... fan from you. Oh really? Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Big Rip. fan. Not a I fan of the fan. I noticed was uh, the Russian is not subtitled on Netflix. It's but not there is, at like, all. One joke hidden in it, where it's just when the flamethrower guy shows up after Jimmy says, "Oh, that's the gayest jacket I've ever seen." Yeah. <laughs> in Russian, to him, he says, "Great jacket. Where can I find one?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My and sister. Then he gets burned to death. I watched this movie with my sister, and she saw that clip out of context, and she's like, oh, too. that was from a movie? I thought it was some yeah. asshole in Russia with a flamethrower. It was on Reddit a couple months ago, I think. Yeah. I saw it, too. I, 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 I was like, wait a minute. I've seen this stupid flamethrower guy before. <laughs> but yeah, Boss so fight. Like, all of the special effects are really good, because this is all done in, like, a blender, which is free. Yeah. And they have a okay. $3 million dollar budget. So I would just say... say like, there is one scene near the end that has... Is it the grenade launcher? It's the grenade launcher. The grenade... I was gonna say the grenade launcher. That looked... It, looked it was, terrible. like, terrible. Like, you could That's see through it. That's the part it look, No, scene. I don't... It looks terrible. It's the scene where it looks like there's two stairways, and there's, like, ten guys in the room. It's probably the grenade launcher scene. And yes. it just looks like it's out of, like, doom. <laughs> Yeah, like it was original. really weird. It oh, looked like yeah, they yeah, added the weapon it up in. And then puts it down, aims it up, puts it down again, and it's very fast, and you can just look at it, and it's like, yeah, it's not a real grenade launcher yeah. at all. They, like, added it in post or something. It was weird. That Which was is, the only part. the rest of the movie looks great. Yeah. With yeah, all the, the action. Looks awesome. And that's the only part where it looks off. Mm hmm. And it doesn't just look off, it looks bad. It's like, it like I, it was bad enough for all three of us to catch that. Yeah. Because um, I did have that in my notes. I was like, that's literally the one part where that doesn't look good at all. Everything yeah. else looks wonderful. I mean, wonderful. Yeah. Well, I'd say it looks, just, it looks good. It, it was on good. par. Good looking. For the budget? Considering what they had. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, there's the scene towards the end with the, uh, where, where they're playing Don't Stop Me Now. And, uh, Fucking, what was the guy's name? Like, Aiken. starts with Aiken. Yeah, Aiken. something like that. Aiken. Um, he's like lifting up all the bodies, and he's doing like parkour off of the bodies. Oh, that was great! And then was... he kills him with his eye. <laughs> yeah, was... he like fucking strangles him with thing. his eye. Also, that that's so another dude. video game reference. Uh, at the end of Modern Warfare Three, you wrap like a cable around Makarov's neck, and then you hang him from the ceiling or some shit. Yeah, but like he that. wrapped it around like his mouth, and like yeah. all that's left is like a top half of head. Yeah, because he goes through the helicopter blade and it gets turned into mist. And, and then the girl's just like, "How can you kill me after all we've been through?" And he just writes in blood, "Easy." <laughs> it's so good. 
It embraced. The movie almost literally ends with GG Easy. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just drops the door on her and then hard cut to the credits. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Who was flying the helicopter? <laughs> I don't know, it's probably like... the same guy from MW3. <laughs> but just, yeah, throughout this, really just good action, so much. Like, I love the sequence at Jimmy's lab, just of him going from Avatar to Avatar. Oh yeah, the fucking uh, musical. <laughs> so creative, that was just really well done. Which Avatar was the best Avatar of Jimmy? Uh, the Ooh. bomb. Definitely the bomb. The what? Oh, the homeless the guy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was great. Was I like that uh, guy. I really do Jimmy appreciate. I appreciate the uh, the World War Two British soldier. I hated that one. Uh, but it's it's definitely just Captain Price from Modern Warfare. It was such a bad British accent. It was terrible, but it was like perfectly terrible. Uh, Jimmy, I think Jimmy is another fun one. What? I also like uh, just coke addict <laughs> Jimmy. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, like, I have no shape to do this right now. <laughs> And then he comes back as, like, a completely different version. You know what's funny? What? I didn't realize the fucking hippie one was Jimmy. I thought that was a different guy. Oh. <laughs> it's all just Jimmy. Because, yeah, um, like, they don't explain it at that point. Like, because you can see the passed out body of coke addict Jimmy and then the yeah. other one in the strip club. And you're just like, wait a minute, why are there two of them? And then it's like it takes a bit until that's actually explained. Yeah. Right. Oh no, it's avatars. Well, you you see like the the first version of Jimmy where he's like cool guy, police officer Jimmy trying to save Henry, and then immediately after it's the bum where he's like, don't worry, yeah. it's me. But you don't question it. You're just like, You're oh, just it's like, like a video uh, okay. Video. This is a world where <laughs> cyborgs and a dude with telekinesis exists. For yeah. Sure. <laughs> it's just a bunch of the same guy. He's an NPC. Unexplained psychic powers is very Metal Gear. It is definitely Metal Gear, yeah. Oh god, yeah, he is Psycho Mantis. Jimmy surviving with that plot armor until you realize it's clones. Wait, shit, clones? That's also a Metal Gear. Oh yeah. no! Wait a minute, the clones were created in order to try to create genetic super soldiers. Aw oh, shit, oh, this god. is Metal Gear! <laughs> Literally just Metal Gear. Um... While the story is Metal Gear, the I think the action I can compare the most to Hotline Miami. I'd say it's definitely yeah, like a combination of Hotline Miami, Duke Nukem, and like Call of Duty. Yeah, I haven't played the, both the, of the uh, street the car chase sequence is also really good with just the motorcycle. He shoots yeah. through the van and then they drive through the. Honestly, van. that is basically a new Call of Duty game when they. I believe it was like Advanced Warfare when they have like the fucking exosuits and they just went ape shit with it. Like I fucking forgot about that whole sequence, and I think that came after Cardcore Henry came out. So, wow, well, so yeah, they just copied it. After a while, they 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 just kind of gave up with realism in Call of Duty, and and we got Advanced Warfare with Kevin Spacey. <laughs> well, no, didn't they just do a space one? Yeah, they did Infinite Warfare. I didn't even buy that one. Like, that's how far I've been gone from the series now. <laughs> the last one I played through was Black Ops 3, because it had uh, some pretty cool ideas. It, it does, like, some mind shit. Connor, we're getting fan again. Ah, uh -huh. it's my AC. Psychic Warfare? Are you saying I don't this? have a fan. Stop calling it a Isn't fan. Isn't an AC a fan? I mean, play. Why are we having this debate now? <laughs> I'm trying to think of, I mean, just the class, the plot of this whole movie is basically just the classic, they took your wife, now it's time for revenge. Basically also the plot of Duke Nukem. Yeah. Except Duke Nukem is, the aliens took the babes, all of them. And, I highly recommend both. I did not both. expect the twist of this movie at all. The, oh yeah, it's pretty good. On it. That was like, oh, shit. And then it's like, oh, that explains why there's the multiple, you know, different voice lines of her talking to the other cyborg soldiers. It's not like some weird recording stuff. It's because she was in on it. Mm -hmm. 
my like, problem oh, with that, that makes much more sense now. Is that my problem with that is that there's really no foreshadowing of that, which I guess that's intentional, but she puts herself in danger a lot at the beginning. Yeah, she like, drops out of the freaking escape pod and it looks she like she's very, almost dead for a bit, and then she's very not. Very easily could have died from that. <laughs> but isn't that also just a Metal Gear thing? Is it? it? <laughs> did you, okay, you gotta play Metal Gear Solid 4. Liquid Snake's plan... Yet, man. Liquid Snake's plan in Metal Gear Solid 4 is so batshit insane, so much shit could have gone wrong, and somehow it ended up perfectly. <laughs> It's it boggles my mind. It's that crazy. You're the guy who's played it all. I've played it all, and I kind of don't remember all of that plan because it's so fucking insane. He has to play two first. He has to meet the president. Yeah, you have to meet the president of the United States. I mean, George Robert, he's Sears. At, he's at the end of one. <laughs> I know. Anyways, what? but you don't yeah. actually get to see his Oct Doctor Octagonopus armor yet. <laughs> Thanks for spoiling that. It's not a spoiler. It's in the fucking trailer. <laughs> Alright, I have a couple more notes, but I've said most of what I want to. There were only two scenes that I really didn't like the first person. Uh, which one? One scene was the foot chase. With Dimitri? Yeah. Yeah, that, that was, was very shaky. The, the one where you had to like throw the bottle? Yeah. Very shaky. That was yeah. that I did like the part where he crashed right into the, the art. <laughs> the head bobbing was really disorienting for me. Yeah, yeah, it was really, really shaky at that scene. I know. It was the other one. Uh, the last scene with all the super soldiers had some really bad moments where I'm just like, like I got all confused. I didn't really like that yeah, scene. Yeah, I'm, I'm really thankful I, did, I, did I don't get that uh, whole sequence because it's just him slowly but surely fighting off every single guy. It was really it, good. It reminded me a lot of the No Mercy uh, ending yeah. in Left 4 Dead. Yeah, it reminded me a lot of Left 4 Dead. That is I mean, there is the case. adrenaline shots. Yeah, I know he just pumps himself full of adrenaline and then early he puts in, like, the new battery. So it just him... Hypothetically, up more and more for the final fight, getting buffed, hypothetically would kill you. No, they explained he was basically all robot at that point, <laughs> so I don't even think that would work. Yeah, There's a like, placebo sure, effect. He's, like, he's pretty much mostly, he's, he's like, there's barely any man of you left, is basically what Jimmy tells him. Because <laughs> he's mostly just machine. I'm, I'm assuming maybe his blood system was the part that was still man? Because he does still bleed a lot. If it bleeds, we can kill it. But he literally rips his torso open to replace his battery. <laughs> you don't do that on the regular? Oh, or shit. rip your eye out to kill a man? Yeah, but like he had eye problems earlier, so it's probably loose. He had eye problems. I, I, do like, I did like the effect of when he rips his eye out, and so you get like the weird double vision. Yeah. That, happened, that also happened when he was, air quotes, killed by the baseball bat. Yeah. It, it oh yeah, right and it also happened. It was also at the beginning of the movie when they're assembling him, essentially. Oh yeah, I don't even remember. And I that. think when he was like out in the forest, when he was yeah, at, after all that, when he's like yeah. getting repaired, it doesn't do that too. So it's I, I did like that That's effect. What I said. Just, oh, yeah, that was wet. right after the baseball bat. Also, did you guys catch the quote he said right before hitting him in the head with the baseball bat? He's like, no, in Russia. Like forty thousand baseball bats are sold oh, each yeah, year, yeah, yeah. and about at most forty baseballs. No, it was like a hundred to fifty. Yeah, or something like that. And it's like gives you a good idea. Of normal Russian pastime, huh? Of just beating shit out of people with bats. <laughs> yeah. And then also, oh, there's the other line where it's like when he and Estella reunited in the truck, and he's like, "Oh, if I." It's like, oh, it's something about, like, having tea, and it's like, I wouldn't need sugar, because this is so sweet. I, I actually know. really didn't like the villain. I get that he was supposed to be really one-note, but he was really boring. Like, kind of ridiculous. At the beginning, he was fun, but, like, eh. I liked him for his just abuse of his powers, but, yeah, other than that, it was just kind of like, I'm bad guy. I am bad guy. I do the telekinesis. <laughs> like, there's a part where he's yeeting him around in the uh, strip club room. Yeah, that's right. 
Also, oh, there's some also... go- violent ass kills. Just some. Nasty I was about to mo- mention the balls. Yeah, the mention with the, the the guy that almost rapes that person. He just like comes in, smashes his balls, and then shoves the police cane down his fucking throat. That was good. That was a good scene. Good scene. Good scene. But yeah, some <laughs> some people get really fucking fucked up in this movie. It it just it reminds me of uh. Out. What, what's it? Uh, the CDI Zelda game where where the guy's like, "You've killed me," and then it cuts to Zelda's face, and she's just like, "Good." <laughs> but yeah, but overall, yeah, no. overall, I really, really liked this movie. I the only thing that kept it from being like perfect for me was the soundtrack. It was kind of awful. Uh, I don't remember too many tracks from it, other than "Don't Stop Me Now." Like, don't uh, stop me but out. none of it, like, of pissed me off. Hotline Miami-ish sounding kind of there music. There was a really good I, one on the final fight also. I don't remember what it was. I looked into it a bit, and apparently the movie's concept came from the director and one of the producers' band they had together. They did a couple music videos that were first person like this, and, like, half of the soundtrack is their music, and I think it's bad. I wish they picked other music. Ah. Oof. Yeah, I say overall, this is actually a nine out of ten for me. Uh because I, the... I just I thought that uh, I mean it's the bullshit crap I love, all put into one movie. However, I think there was some editing, and I yeah, the soundtrack wasn't entirely memorable. Oh right, the editing. I just remember the scene. It was on that same foot chase at the with Dimitri. At one point, he is going through an alley, and when he exits the alley. It cuts. It hard cuts to a completely different location, and it's really hard. Yeah, to it does do that a couple points. Yeah, that's that's, that's what's stopping it from being a like ten out of ten for me. Chase. And I, I, I don't know. Do that that like, you don't need to see a whole. What was that noise? Running up a corridor. It's like you just skip to more. That, that noise was Mitch. Just saying. Okay. What? We're having audio was problems this episode. Was I doing bad voice things? Where's just a loud beep? There was a squeak. What? Anyway, I don't know. I'll turn it down in a post. I think if this had... Okay, the one movie I would compare this to for just sheer fun, sheer stupid, sheer, like, it's just an action movie, get over it, you know, no story. Mm-hmm. Uh, open Baby Driver. But I heard it, really good things and also really good soundtrack. But Baby Driver's whole thing is that it's set up to music, and that's what makes me think if they ever do a second hardcore Henry, I hope they get like they like hire they just a band hire Har- Carpenter do... Brunt. The, that's yeah. one of the guys oh, that did yeah, Hotline so Miami. Carpenter Brunt or just get a Hotline Miami esque soundtrack yeah. and you're golden. Yeah. Oh man. Or Fury. Some synthwave. Oh my god. Yeah. That would be so good. But yeah, I think with a better soundtrack, this movie could be a nine out of ten. But as it is now, seven point five, maybe an eight. I gave it an eight. All right, you know mine it's was a, a nine. It's a good movie. It's a really good movie. Good I highly movie. recommend it. Thank you, Max. You so redeemed yourself it. from Girls and Panzer. <laughs> I don't or think I'll ever redeem you. myself for that. <laughs> I will defend it to the end of times. Anyways, speaking of anime, a place further, a place than, further the than the universe. Antarctica. Is my record still perfect? Antarctica. Ah. That was, that was good. That was good. It was good. That was awful. Yeah, what are you talking about? That was great. That was a terrible noise. Um, no, no, it was a good noise. It was a <laughs> okay. Good noise. Um. Okay. Let's talk about the anime. This... That was the sound a printer makes when it's jammed. <laughs> it's a dying printer, as they all are. <laughs> Dude, I have this piece a of shit in my room right now. To the Antarctica. Yeah. I that was my main problem with the show is uh I liked it overall I'm gonna say but uh they take way too fucking long to just get there I know that was yeah, the point sucks. of the show but like I felt like going in like oh man the fucking line at the end of the show is gonna be like the real Antarctica was friendship all along <laughs> or some shit okay but like in 2017 do you really expect that. <laughs> I kind of got that. Um, I actually expected, 
I really expected it to be episode 12 Antarctica, and I was very pleased that it was episode 6 Antarctica. Yes, me too. Like, there was some, there were some episodes leading up to Antarctica, I'm like, this isn't the whole show, is it? You know? It kind of is the whole show, though. I know, oh, but like... Yeah. Like I like just by the by the time that they basically confirmed that they could get to Antarctica, I was like, oh, thank God. But the entire time they're like, oh no, we might not make it. They yeah. Over here, like, seven it's like it's like shut the fuck up. You ha- you're you're there in the intro. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and if and if you don't actually get there, then I will be mad because the intro basically just lied to me. You see. I would have liked that. I would have hated it. I would have felt like my entire time was wasted. I mean, my time was wasted anyway, because this show wasn't good. I thought it was alright. It's worse than alright. It's bad. It it actually kept my attention all the way through, which is more than I can say from the previous movie that we just watched. Not Hardcore Henry, but uh, the one I can't even think of the name of. Yeah, that one. (laughs) It's so forgettable. Sorry, Sorry, but not sorry. Yeah. Uh, Thanks for ruining my first Ghibli for me. You know what? (laughs) It's all uphill from there. I've actually seen a friend of mine said he saw a top 10 list of, like, Ghibli, and that was at the worst. Like, it was at the top 10 worst Ghibli. Wait, do you guys guys not know? What? Only Yesterday has, like, I think it still has a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Why? Did only one person review it? Because it's an art house movie. I feel like the only people that that fucking watched it were just like, oh, I watched it. I gotta give it 100% because I watched it now. Nobody else will believe me. I I kind of doubt that, but okay. I know. I'd give it 100% just to make other people watch it. (laughs) Okay, back on track. It's not that bad. I didn't like it. It, it, this this show looks real damn good. I really Does like. It? I actually would say the visuals were better than the uh, place uh, or only yesterday. Really though. I liked them. I don't know. Really. I thought it had it good use of color. Land to me. Ugh. I don't watch shows like this often, so maybe all of the shows like that like this are look okay. like this. Let me tell you my my experience. This same season that this aired. I watched Eurocamp, which it was compared a lot to, because, you know, they're yeah. similar, kind of. Um, and Hakume Tomikochi, which is one of my personal favorite anime I've ever watched. And they're all Slice of life E. with okay. this, this one being the most, like, goal-oriented. And I think Hakume Tomikochi looks way better than this, and Eurocamp looks about the same. And that's not saying much. I think All it's right. unimpressive. It's bland. The only animation that they really put all the money into was the facial expressions, and those annoyed me. Gee. Wow. Oof. My problem with this show is that you have two halves. You have the cute girls doing cute things half, which is bad, and you have the Hallmark movie half, which is also pretty bad. What do you mean by Hallmark half. movie? It is super generic. It is engineered to make you feel the emotions. And oh, it's yeah, inspirational. definitely. Yeah. Mm. The real Antarctica was the friends we made along. Uh. There's just so many b- plot points that are, like, so formulaic and, like, trying to Oh, There's the whole it fucking or... part where they almost lose the passport and then it was like, oh, it was there the whole time, but we already got the tickets for the other plane. And it's like, uh It's the same thing that happened with flipping Girl Zoon Panzer, where they're like, huh, is this girl that's the main character going to join the tank team? Huh, I wonder if she will. Like, it's so, like, just shut up. <laughs> just, yeah. Just go, just don't you, don't waste an episode on this crap. It's yeah. not interesting. Well, the also, I can I can I talk first. about how much I fucking hated that passport plot? So they fucking yeah. they they Go do the it. whole thing. They get the fucking they they get the new tickets for the fucking you know plane on a different day so they can get their passports made uh, or the new passport made for the you know whatever. 
And then they're like, oh, we had the passport the whole fucking time. And it's like, first off, that would have been the first thing to do. Check everybody's bag. Second off, they, like, fixed the whole thing. They're like, oh, we were able to exchange the tickets back. And they, like, announced that in the last, like, three seconds. It, like, resolves in the last three fucking seconds of the episode. That presents another problem that's completely irrelevant. The flipping million yen. Yeah, and they never do anything with it. Do you guys know what Shekhov's gun is? What's that? Yes. If you show a gun in the first act, it must be fired before the third act, or at the third act. If you set up a plot point, you have to use it. If a plot point becomes useless, then the, there's no reason to have it. Take out the million yen, it's useless. I think the point with it by the end of the movie was that she was counting it and then, like, showing what she's done to get there, but she doesn't fucking spend it ever. That scene, that scene is unironically one of my favorite scenes in the entire anime, the scene where she's counting out the money and just... I thought it was good, because it, it felt one. like the most different than anything else. My problem with the scene is that they kept on cutting to flashbacks of her mom, and I'm like... We know her mom's dead. We know yeah. she cares about her mom. You've told us 50 times already. Just it, it let felt her like, count out the money. It felt Keep like it they quiet. never explicitly said that they killed her mom, and they, like, hinted it at it, you know, the whole time, and it felt like they didn't know that we know that she was dead, if that makes sense. Yeah, in the first 10 episodes, you don't know if she's dead or lost. <laughs> Yeah, but, like, also, like, because they never ex explicitly say that, by the time that you're probably, like, oh, she's dead, um, the show doesn't feel like it has told you that, and it just kind of shoves it in your face ever since that point, I don't know. Does yeah, I right? get what you're saying. There were some people in the comments who were saying on the last episode, uh, what, where's her mom? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna keep it real with you, Chief. She ain't coming back. It both shows that people weren't paying attention to the show and that it doesn't communicate it well enough. I yeah. Think. Mm. Uh, Mitch, talk some more. Uh, I have a lot uh, of things I, to yeah, say. I guess I'm in the minority on this one. I kind of oh, like this. Also, speak, speaking minority. speaking about well, the, the mom group. coming back. Uh, the, the email at the end, she gets like an email back, and I'm like, please tell me they didn't fucking actually bring the mom back from the dead somehow. No, no, they showed, they showed, um... Yeah, I know they showed her sending the email, but for a moment, I'm like, honestly, it'll be such a, so bad, it's good moment if the mom is still alive the whole time. Oh yeah, for a moment, I was like, wait, wait a minute. And like, it's like, okay, so no, bad, no, no. it's good. <laughs> What if the last scene would be the mom reaching for the million yen? <laughs> Zombie. She's like this, like, like very, very starving, like, corpse of a human that's barely hanging on in the old, like, research base. And she's like, where's my laptop? And then she dies. Oh, man, that would be sad. sad. <laughs> she was alive the whole time, and then they went there, didn't see her, and then she died after the fact. I mean, it's Antarctica. She's probably dead after like she would she would be super dead day. by yeah super dead dead for years especially if she was just outside okay mitch when you say you're in the minority you definitely mean in this podcast because in the world people love this anime yeah that's what i'm getting at uh what what did you like about it i'm just curious uh, i thought like a lot of the character relations and stuff were nice like just how they're constantly giving each other shit and it's like yeah that's friendship that's what it's really like it's i liked like... some of those aspects but then there was like too much of people being like hyperbolized to the extremes yes where yes, it was just like you, you oh you it. need to sign the friendship contract and they're like that's oh, not how friendship God. worked i'm like oh get on with it just go outside to fucking alaska or whatever place you're at i don't care anymore Okay, I wrote a couple paragraphs on why I hate the characters in this anime, and that is the biggest thing that I took issue with. The characters are two note. They have one personality trait that's positive and one personality trait that's negative. That girl, her, her positive trait is that, oh, she's famous, she's like an idol, she's super good at what she does, but she doesn't get how friends work. Yeah. I'm like, 
have you seen uh, I say this with experience have you seen a person with no friends have you met them <laughs> have you ever decided to talk to someone who does not have friends they're they're basically like oh thank god somebody's go trying watch, to talk to me go watch Watamote go watch yes I hate saying this Origairu no, they just watch Watamote good they have very good representations of how lonely people work. They try to rationalize why they're lonely. They try to fantasize about being alone. They like being alone most of the time after so many years, you know. And this girl in A Place for the Universe, you know, she was literally ostracized since she was like five. Like, yeah. do you know what that yeah. does to someone mentally? Do you know, like... You I mean, child become... actors are not really mentally well, usually. You can become like clinically depressed from that. It's awful. But yeah. no, just just hug her, just cry a bit, cry so much. There's so much crying in this anime. Just Lots cry, just <sighs> pat her on the head. She'll be fine. No mental issues. Ugh. It's fucking trash. Also, I'm very surprised. Uh, they they had a civilian expedition to fucking Antarctica, and all the civilians were just high school students. I would feel like they'd bring more people in just adults. I think it's implied that everyone there was technically a civilian. What? I, I think the they're all researchers. Being, I think the implication of it being civilian is that they did they didn't have the authorization to do research. They lost the quality. They weren't like government they, employees. I don't know. I guess anymore. it didn't communicate that much to me. They were all researchers, but they were not going because they were researchers. That's what I got out of it. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, like, because they showed them, like, doing shit with weather balloons and whatnot. That, I mean, they probably have a job, like, maybe a private organization. I guess. Maybe it's their own organization. That would make the most sense. Oh, dude, I just remembered this. You you mentioned the, the gun thing earlier with, like, you know, bringing up a plot point and never using it. Uh, yeah. They learn how to use compasses and shit. And they, there's, like, a whole training segment on it, and that's yeah, literally there here. just to show them trying to learn things. They, they don't actually lost. use the compasses. In fact, I'm pretty sure the whole time they're with adults. They never go out on their own. But you get to see them camping together. That'll sell I, the I liked the, I liked the, uh, the ending part of that scene when they're all in the tent talking with each other. Because like there's a part where they're like all trying to sleep. And then they just that keep is laughing. The realest stuff. That is the realest scene ever. And then fucking Debbie Downer is like, my mom's dead. <laughs> That's the whole anime, though. Yeah. Make me feel bad for liking this. I, hey, I'm now you sorry. know how I felt last week. I'm yeah, sorry, bitch, kind of sucked. <laughs> But the actual story of this is not bad. I like the idea of people going to Antarctica because they... Because they can, you know? That's really interesting. I, I did but, like that part of it. Yeah, the show hit me in that good place of like, huh, I've never really been outside of this half of the U.S. And it's like, damn, I gotta go um, out. And I actually was looking... The country sometime or something. I was looking at photos, like I was looking at stuff for the thumbnail. I like searched something about the show, and uh, I saw a picture of two guys from Japan in Antarctica. Apparently this actually inspired people to actually for real go to Antarctica. Which is fucking insane. I feel bad for them. Antarctica's terrible. Yeah, it's fucking cold. There's right, penguins. Is that it? Is there's that penguins. It there's the cold, there's the penguins, and I guess the Aurora Borealis. Insert meme. So yeah, Antarctica sucks. Don't go there. Go to, like, Canada. Because at least it's cold and cool. Go to Europe. Go to Spain, dude. Spain looks awesome. Spain looks pretty cool, but uh, there's some government stuff. But yeah. They Travel. I just really... recommend traveling to a cool place. I think Italy is probably a good place to start if you've never Italy's traveled good. before. Spain's good. Uh, the um, culture in Italy is really nice to foreigners, usually. I've heard as long as you're not an asshole. About, I've heard good things about some of the Nordic Nordic countries. Probably. I don't know why. I don't know why you would gonna want to go there. Sorry, but. Yeah. Uh, just uh, so our listeners know, uh, Mitch is in BRB right now, um, but we will hold this over. It's fine. We can just talk without it because we like, We're, we've we've been like trashing it. this the whole time, anyways. I feel now we, bad now for we can Mitch. really dig in. I feel bad for Mitch, but I'm sorry. This isn't a good. 
I thought there was good moments, and it it did, unlike most slice of life things, hold my attention the whole way through. I didn't get like bored and just kind of like want to leave the whole time. But there was definitely some moments where I was like, I'm about to. I the thing that really I think the if you're gonna have a slice of life, if you're gonna watch people do relatively mundane things, I guess it's not really in this show, but. If you just want to watch people live their lives, I want them to be interesting characters. I want them to be, like, characters I care about. But yeah. the main character is literally nothing. She's just a self-insert. The, oh my god, Shirase, she's kind of the main character, the black hair, mom, dead. Um, yeah, but she was not it. the main character, main character. But she's basically the main character. The whole story's about her. It's about her, but, like... The first character that we meet is not her. It's her friend that joins because of her, her and it her follows her more. Friend. They're yeah. all useless. They're all useless. Yeah. Um. There was oh, there was the whole the thing where she's playing uh, the PlayStation with her one friend, and she accidentally unplugs it, and I was okay, like, oh, is friend, that foreshadowing? But it was like the subplot was terrible. It was like reverse foreshadowing. It's like I was trying to sabotage you the whole time, and it's like, oh, cool. Well, you failed, uh, idiot. Okay. People don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. First off, asshole. Second off, what the fuck? Third off, that <laughs> would never happen. <laughs> oh, man. That's another one of my problems. People are really unnecessarily antagonistic in this show. Just I, for, like, th- throughout the, people, the first the half of this... People, oh. The expedition people are really, are really pro- problematic because if you need money and you need publicity... Okay, someone is handing you... What is it? Like $100,000... You yeah, know, it was really a million bad. yen, so probably a hundred thousand. Yeah. So someone's handing you a hundred thousand dollars to your company that is struggling with money and needs publicity, and this strange person is saying, "Hey, let us go with. Let me go with you on this expedition." You Why know what else you could do? You could Why? also totally just like, "Hey, we're doing an expedition and allowing civilians uh, hold a contest. People will eat that shit up." Definitely. Like, even if it's something people don't want for any reason. Just, like, say, like, have you ever been to Antarctica? Now is your chance, accepting only four people or something like that. That would be the obvious solution, even if it was really small. Like, you could get – even if you would have one person who was really passionate about it, you can get, like, 4chan to, like, sign up people like they have in the past. Yeah. Uh, another problem I had with the plot is – you had the them like saying, "Oh, we can do we can if if we try hard enough, we can get to Antarctica." But if you think about it, the only reason they were allowed to go is because the uh, famous person reached out to them because she didn't want to go. And if that didn't happen, they probably weren't going to be able to go. And you know what's confusing to me? They were a hundred percent willing to send four extra people they had not planned for. That well, they three were not people. intending to go, and there were no no problems at all. <laughs> yeah. No problems. It was perfectly <laughs> fine. But we're struggling with money, also. Yeah, yeah. They <laughs> they can totally afford, you know, four four high schoolers, but they can't afford, you know, I, I don't. Know. They can't yeah. afford to make an observatory. It, yeah, it's ridiculous. Also, uh, let's talk about the soundtrack had some notes about that uh i say it was overall good except they tried to insist that the recorder was a viable instrument oh god and i i literally just has a have a note and it addresses anime as a whole stop using the recorder it's the worst instrument it's okay. fucking terrible I get it sometimes because they I, I mean, schools in America do this too, but schools in Japan usually the the younger years they give they have a recorder. Oh they yeah, play no, well, we we had recorder stuff. in our, our our middle school or our preschool or elementary yeah, school. Yeah, it's like preschool, kindergarten around there. I was us. annoyed by the recorder when I had to play the recorder. <laughs> that, yeah, and the thing that bothered me the most about this show is that they have one recorder song and they use it like four times throughout yes. the whole show, and it's never good. It, never good. The recorder is just not a good instrument. 
That's why people hated the Yoshi Story soundtrack, I believe. <laughs> it was just all recorder. That's kind of ironically good, though. It's ironically good. It's not you really good. You can laugh at it and enjoy yeah. yourself, but it's not good. It's the not problem fun. with this soundtrack is when they had the recorder track, it was like, hey, the rest of the instruments in this song are really good. What if we just took out the recorder? I wouldn't have complained <laughs> at the very least. But I was going to say about the music, I feel like they try to police your feelings a lot. Yes. Like when something's going on, they're like, ooh, smooth piano music because this is sad. I You're did like cry like these girls. I like I did like the happy music. Like it's fine. If, if it's there's going bad. to be a track that is dictating my feelings, I would be fine if it was that one. But I, I I remember the sad one. I'm like, oh no, sad things are gonna happen. Is it gonna get worse? I don't know. Let's wait for the piano cue. <laughs> wait for the piano cue. Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> it's just like um, if they put in the music, that means they're gonna dwell on this for way too long. Yeah. Uh, there's so many scenes where no music would be so good you know yeah like we were talking about that money scene where she's laying out the money and saying all her jobs that's a beautiful scene if you take out the flashbacks you take out the music you don't need music for that because it's just like you're just thinking it's just supposed to be emotional quiet when people are emotional like actually emotional like grieving or something they're not loud. They're very yeah. quiet. They're silent. Like, and I get that a lot of the stupid, like, ugly crying is supposed to be cute because these are cute girls. I fucking but... hate crying in any fucking, like, media that's for shit that is not worth crying over. It is the most annoying thing. It's definitely my major problem with uh, the fucking later episodes of Spongebob, where Spongebob's, like, fucking crying oh over the stupidest shit all the time. It's like, dude, this show used to be really good. I should cry over that instead. They had a good episode. They had an episode making fun of that, though. Really? Uh, I think it was something like he's told that if he cries more, he's gonna, like, die or I something. I think I, I remember know. that one, and I was annoyed by it because it was like, all right, but also this is falling victim to the thing it's making fun of. That's kind of... That, that that happens a lot. It, I, wasn't that, like, the problem that a lot of people had, like, with One Punch Man? No, definitely not. Oh, okay. No, I heard, like, one thing... One with, I, I heard something like that about it. No, no one cries okay. in One Punch Man. That doesn't happen. No, I meant, like, uh, in One Punch Man that it parodied, like... Oh yeah, that's my it, problem with it. Because yeah, the whole it parody became is what it was trying to stuff. parody. It just becomes a superhero show the more you go on. Yeah. It sounds like something that would be really good for one season and then nothing more. And I think they had more than one season, so. I think they could have done a really good movie, and that would have been all you needed. <laughs> yeah. You guys still hate this anime? Yeah. Oh yeah, we, we, we've uh discussing. yeah. Um, I want to say a couple more things before I'm done, because I've said most of my stuff. Um, this this is based on a manga, and the manga is actually published with a lot of other things in, in you know monthly magazine, with Steins Gate, um, Defrag, which is great, um, a couple other things. I think Senran Kagura. It. It's baffling, but it's still publishing. So this isn't the anime did not end the story. Well, I mean, in the anime, they're like, we're coming back to Alaska sometime. I know it's Antarctica, but Alaska sounds so much lamer. Clearly, they're going to the South Pole with the horrible friend. Yeah, that is how it ends. Oh, yeah, we, we were totally dogging on that shitty friend. Oh, yeah, no, she sucks. But, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll hear it later, I guess. Yeah. I I don't like all the characters, all of them. I, there's not a single character. That I, I'm like, I like yeah, the, I like, I like the one guy, um, because he didn't have a backstory and they didn't talk about him for way too long. It, it was the, the guy, guy that was trying to hit on the captain. But the guy's whole personality is that he likes girls. That's it. Yeah, but, like, compared to the rest of the characters in the show, um, I didn't know anything about him, and I was fine with that, because I knew everything about every other character. Yeah, if I liked any character, it was probably the mom's friend. 
Yeah, cause she she's similar. She you don't know her too much. Yeah, you only see her in the past looking after Fulpin Shirase. Yeah. Also, I I want to note that the uh, there's a scene where she's logging into the old laptop. First off, there's no fucking way it would be on that quickly. It's Windows it Seven. In. It would be dead. <laughs> well, she plugged it in. It did show her bringing it back all the way to her room. She had it plugged in, so I'm going to assume she... Uh, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt that she plugged it in for a little while. Like, she found the old charge or whatever. Um, and the she got the password wrong the first time, and then I looked at the keyboard. The password was 1101. What a shit password. Oh, I thought it was... Um... I thought they did the trope. I couldn't obviously. I couldn't really read the keyboard, but I thought well, she was typing letters for her name or something because that's always what it ends up being. Maybe I don't know. There was like numbers on the button she was pressing, so maybe I'll they look were. It up real quick, I don't know actually. how Japanese keyboards work, but from what I saw about it, it was a four-letter password, and I thought it was one one zero one. Well, num numbers are also have you know phonetic pronunciations, and those can be used oh, to make names and stuff. I'm gonna okay. look it up. Okay, I have learned something. New so yeah, it's probably like her word. name for the password then. With that uh, bootleg Windows 7. There was also the bootleg Coca-Cola. What was Coca it called? And the Pony Station. It was a uh, oh yeah the the PlayStation. With with their uh, shitty Poyo game. I I just looked it up. Do you know what it is? What is it? It's Black Hair Girl's birthday. <laughs> Oh, it's probably like 1101 then, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, you were right. It's numbers. And oh, he's got a BRB again, dang it. And apparently when the flipping when the emails are updating of all her dear dear mother emails, apparently on the last frame it says 1101 emails. <laughs> God damn it. That's such like that that just that, like, is just a dumb coincidence. It's not even, like, a number that would mean anything. Like, I thought they were just going to do something like have the exact amount of email since, like, like well, I think what, she I was, like, gone, like, three years ago. I believe 101 is, like, slightly over three years if she was doing one a day. Okay. So, I, I think... I guess that works. Wait, that would also means she'd be... But it also takes, like, a, what, like, over a month to get home? Right, yeah, it's there. Are, if you also factor in, like, she probably didn't die on any exact day, they probably don't know. Yeah, but I meant, like, uh, I wonder when the earliest they could have gotten the information to her that she was left behind. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. They, oh, okay. They don't, the uh, flippin' black haired girl, mom dead. Uh, she. <laughs> Can I just call her mom dead? I don't know her name either. It's Shirase. She's the black hair, but I just want to call I, her. Mom I just dead. know her by long haired black hair girl. Well, not by the end. <laughs> oh, yeah, she gets a cut, and it's a big reveal. It's like, shut oh, up. God, Fucking Sakura really did it angry. first. Because usually, one of the, the. There's this story. Of course, I know this. There's this story layout called the Bill, Dung, Bill Dung Ro, Dung's Roman. It's literally just a coming of age, but that's the fancy term for it. Okay. And usually, I think I've heard that before, actually. Usually, probably in your English class or whatever. But anyway, yeah. usually there's a lot. It's the a most common trope ever to have a a, a, a child looking towards their parent as like a paragon, as like a, a flipping, what do you uh, call map. it? A martyr. Like a martyr. Okay. Okay. Like flipping Hamlet's dad, which if you if you're citing Hamlet, then it's an ancient trope. But and usually in these kinds of stories, the child overcomes their attachment to the parent. You know, they become yeah. their own person. In this show, she doesn't. She becomes more like her mom. I still don't like like if it was a coming of age. I still don't know how exactly or in what way she has grown up other than that she's been able to like i guess let go i think none of the characters in this show grow up except the main girl like the actual point of view girl yeah uh, the one girl gets friends i guess okay. the the sure. the the main girl learns to get new friends 
Uh, the the main girl, the point of view girl, I really don't remember her name. Um, she learns to like take take initiative in her life. She learns to not be yeah. lazy to carpe diem. Um, but the other girl, the other girl that infuriated me, the probably second the most, cashier was the yeah the Is super in, super high intelligent girl who passed high school even though she's fifteen. I hated her. Um, she had like her whole like ending arc in like one like five minute time span. And now that I think about it, it was never really concluded. <laughs> well, they were basically I th I believe her arc was ended way before anybody else's when they were like, oh, I was bullied in high school and stuff. Nobody liked me. Oh, look, my high school friends friends with like quotes over them uh, are trying to contact me again. That's cool. And then the uh, other characters go up and they're like, hey, shit faces, you were a dick to this person in high school. Don't act like you were friends with them. And I think that was just the arc. I was just going to say, isn't that the end? <laughs> that's not like at the very end, though. That's just like the end of that arc. Yeah, that's my point. Like, that's... It's like way, way before the actual end of the show, though. I think it's like episode eight. Yeah. Um, yeah, they don't go any further with that, do they? No, they don't. <laughs> Okay, so she doesn't have an arc, basically. Yeah. Except she loses a passport and she's hyper intelligent. I didn't even realize it was her that lost the passport. Yes, I just remember that somebody her. did. Because she is a self confident woman who can't have other people relying on her because she's so smart and great. Ugh. Yeah. Okay, I wanna I wanna say something I wrote about after I watched it that uh, it's going to kind of sound like a rant, but I, I think this is I think this is really important to get across and now, right now because Mitch is gone. I kind of want to... <laughs> He's going to like look time. at the uh, this this episode afterwards and be like, oh, God. He <laughs> like try to like here. defend everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have love we'll Discord arguments. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm just going to read this out. So you can interrupt me, whatever. But... The idea of dreams as something that can't wait for you is just hilarious. Dreams are an aspect that grow and evolve with our own mindsets and society. They are a culmination of our aspirations and our desires, the road to our ideal self, and hopefully our ideal world. They're abstract and incredibly hard to actually achieve. Otherwise, they devolve into a glorified to-do list. You don't need friends to accomplish your dreams. You don't need absurd amounts of money. You don't need a company of like-minded individuals. You don't need to suffer. You don't need to defeat your demons. It's your dream. Make it on your own terms, on your own time, even if it takes you 100 years. And that's the thing that really frustrates me about this show. They make it seem like dreams are something you have to do right now. You have to jump out of your chair, stop being lazy, and do things. That's just not true. You can work towards things. You can have your dream be flipping, going and asking a girl out. You know, that can be really hard for people. And it's, it just feels so – what I don't like about the show is that it polices how you're supposed to feel and what you're supposed to do in your life way too much. It's like cry at this moment. Go and have a dream. Go and do something like go to Antarctica. You don't have to do any of that. That's just – it's just so so ridiculous, you know? Yeah, I, I think if you want a, a good believe something to achieve something plot, you should watch a little show – called Tengen Top and Gurren Lagann. And Gurren if you Lagann want, is such a good example. Of... And if you want uh, anything else, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where this is I going. Mean, but... Flippin' Watamote is already yeah. really good about this because it's about this loner girl who just wants friends. And, and it's she... really sad. But yeah. she makes friends. You know? she makes... It takes she a while. She realizes that she can make friends in some capacity. I think there's like the part where she like... She's watching the fireworks. I, I, I don't, I don't know. Is this Watamode spoilers? Go ahead. It's a, um, it's another slice of life show. Yeah. No, spoiler warning. Uh, she watches fireworks with like a tenth grader or fifth grader, or some shit. And I think that was her making time. a friend. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. She made friends there, and she it's had been her a friend while. from, uh, she had her friend from middle school that she hung out with, and that was really nice. Yeah. Um, another show 
if we're really just throwing out stuff here because we have to just have things to supplementary time. materials what what shows could you put in to watch instead of this one uh honey and clover um one of my problems with a lot of these shows is that the characters are way too young to be doing what they're doing from what i've heard and this is just like don't trust me on this high school is taken really seriously in japan it's basically how college is taken in america um because you you have to apply and all that it's very different from from like public schools in america yeah. um i don't know if people at their age would be allowed to just go to antarctica for four months three months um but honey and clover i think does this really well with them all being in college because you know people usually have like dream life dream life crises about a like, lot of people doing. do that during college age they're like i don't want to do school more i want to go out and go to cancun and i want to go explore the fucking jungle or whatever and that's usually at college because they're like finally i have money and i have the resources but the problem is making that an anime is it wouldn't be relatable to all the otakus in high school and that's why i think shows like um honey and clover is it's about a bunch of kids in art school who are just finding their dreams and there's this really great scene near the end of the first season i'm not going to spoil all of it i'm just going to vague where one character is just really fed up with his life and he like doesn't know where he's going he's an architecture major but he like doesn't love it he's good at it he doesn't love it um and he just decides to to leave he just decides to leave and because he's a college student he can do that he mm -hmm. has the money he just leaves and it's it's basically everything that this show is trying to do but good realistic um achievable by the by the average person you don't need a million yen you don't need friends you don't yep. need it's just you and that's what dreams are you know yeah, it's just is. whatever you decide to do. Um, speaking of that, speaking of also, sp okay, speaking of doing your dreams and speaking of being an architect that wants to do something else with their life, uh, can we just use this as a good moment to talk about Neil Breen? Neil Breen, of course. Go on about <laughs> Neil Breen. Just, just Neil Breen. He he was this architect guy that uses his extra cash from his architect stuff to make some fantastic content i actually it, did not know that about neil breen yeah okay. he, he uses his like he, like he just was like a he's like a i think an average architect like he's not like big name architecture he's just like you know an architect but uh well, he just I makes the movie no yeah i didn't know he he was so such a humble beginning for our, our favorite breen <laughs> he's a real human breen when, when you know does that? twisted pear drop I have no idea. Oh man, it, 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 I don't. We did we mention this last episode? I, feel I think like we, we did. should explain who Neil Breen is yeah. in case anyone doesn't know. Basically, he's he makes really. I'm just gonna say it. He makes bad movies, but they're what? really entertaining. They're yeah, they're insanely bad. Also, uh, for some reason, there's a common motif through them uh, to have computer electronic like abuse. He, also, he does not handle laptops well. <laughs> also, like, I think, wasn't it, like, the plot for, like, all three movies that he's made so far generally the same? There's, like, a magic stone in each of them that gives him magical powers, and he is basically Jesus or something? Yeah, Neil Breen is Jesus. Um, politicians are terrible. There's this great scene at the end of one of the movies where it's just a line of politicians, like not people you would recognize, just actors, but they're just playing politicians. Generic politicians. And they're all confessing all of their crimes. I think oh, one yeah. of them just shoots himself in public. Oh, yeah. Speaking of a uh, suicide, there's there's a great scene in the one movie. Uh, I cannot believe this. I cannot believe you have committed suicide. How could you have committed suicide? <laughs> That Me so acting good. that out right here was better than the acting in the original. It, you you it can't is... see his facial expressions, but just know they're better. Look it up. All right, we're back, everybody. Mitch is back. Sorry, He's yeah. here. Sorry about that. I, 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 I had things to do. Things no, to do, man. places to go. Gotta follow my rainbow. 
We don't have uh, time yeah. to go Did you to go Antarctica? to Antarctica? No. We both made that joke, Max. Oh, wait, did you? I'm sorry. It's fine. Okay, uh, so... Okay, I'm, I talked about how I, I'm alright with the characters-ish, kind of. And, and then you said, oh, no, they suck. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I really don't want to put you down that much. I want us all we... to get our thoughts out, so go for it. Uh, just Connor, like say one like good thing about the show. There's continuity moments where there's things that are like alluded to earlier that get brought back later. Oh, no. Uh, like, <laughs> Shinata mentions, oh, I hate when people you know stand up for me and all that during the passport shenanigans. And then you get to episode 11 when... She Sure says so defending her against the track team, and it's like, oh, now now it's all good. I don't then... remember that, so I can't argue against it. The uh, I I know what I know what uh he's talking about, but I like how much they go into depth about the actual like logistics of going to Antarctica. They talk a oh, lot yeah, no, about the boat good stuff. and like the supplies they need. I uh, I like really the whole uh part where they're actually in the boat. And yeah, it's all rocking good. around. And they were Except, all getting seasick. Yeah, Personally, all getting I've seasick had the fun. opposite memories in terms of boats, but that's because I don't get seasick. And if you don't get seasick and you're in that situation, it's really fucking funny. It's <laughs> it's just it's it's like a roller coaster, but you don't know what's happening. <laughs> if you've been on the inside of a really terrifying. shaky boat. <laughs> no, I was a kid, so it was really funny. Have you been on a big boat? Uh, it wasn't a no. big boat either. Oh, okay. I've been on a ferry, but it wasn't very rocky. It yeah, just like, that's yeah. usually how they are. Just like fishing with family, and also one time I went to uh, on like a little boat thing through like around Niagara Falls, like on the oh. American side. Yeah. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah. What's My... the name of that thing? I forget. Uh, I don't know. Uh, like fa- it's probably like, it's like ferry or something. Tour. The tune of that. My dad had a boat uh that had like a small hole in it nothing big enough to stand up in but something like you could lie down in my sister were uh, and i were in it um as we went from we went all the way to kelly's island across lake erie um and it was way too wavy for us to be in the hole but we insisted that we stayed and it was fucking hysterical. We were just oh, getting no. knocked around. There was pillows and shit, so it wasn't, like, dangerous, but it was hilarious. Oh, man. Yeah, I've been boating in uh, the Gulf of Mexico a fair amount, actually. And uh, that's usually not that bad if you're not going that fast. But it's not a very big boat, so yeah. you can tell when you're going to shake a bit. I would say um, if I was on a giant fishing boat and saw waves crashing over the sides of me. Oh, God. Like in those fucking movies or in in this show specifically, I'd be terrified. I hate that shit. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, I've... uh... Oh, shit, that's a lot of water. Yeah, that is a lot of water. I've been on a battleship as, like, you know, a little promotional thing. Um, Yeah, I've... Yeah, we probably went to the same one up in... It's by Niagara Falls, actually. Uh, I I haven't been to Niagara Falls, but I've been been on... on... Okay. Um, I, there's some I've been to a few things a big ship for like Boy Scouts. Uh, by the, yeah. up in Cleveland. Oh, there's also yeah the big steel ship. One a couple times. Um, yeah, there's one up in New York that's a big docked battleship, and I was there for a Boy Scout event actually, and we slept in it, and it was not the most pleasant thing. <laughs> <laughs> that those things are not comfortable at all. Okay. I yeah, wasn't back, even moving. Back, back on the track. Basically, oh. I'm I'm just gonna. Just to sum it up, I thought character interactions in, were nice, They're, even if most of the characters aren't most fleshed out in the world. I uh, thought it looked good, but I guess you guys were kind of in on it. I, no, I, I thought it looked it. all right. I don't. I, I haven't seen what Connor's talking about, so I, I can't... I thought it looked fine. I It didn't stand out to me at all. I didn't think it was bad. Mm-hmm. I think the animation, they really went all out with the facial expressions. It's just that I didn't like the faces that they were connected to, you know? Okay, like, if they gave sure, this animation uh... to, like, Monster Musume or, like, Spice and Wolf, um, I would be all over it, but... Con- Connor doesn't like it because there's no monster titties. <laughs> Confirmed. I'm not a movie guy, okay? <laughs> okay, if fine, whatever. If you body part, that would have been good, but no. And, There's no uh, huggable some... monsters, as he would as he would say. There you go. Calling you out right now. 
You can call me out all you want. I love my monster girls. Okay. He has no shame. You can't, you can't fight him. You, can't, you cannot freedom. defeat the man who has no shame. He can't be stopped. <laughs> And then uh, just the, I felt there was like a lot of good like emotional stuff that kind of was getting at me a little bit here and there. So in the end, give it a seven. You know what, Mitch? I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm really glad that you enjoyed the thing you picked. Yay! Because it's I not didn't... like I watched it ahead of time. I just picked this because I heard good things. I know, and I, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, you didn't say that for me when I liked Girls in yeah, Panzer. Fucking... <laughs> um, <laughs> you had already watched it. I had already watched it. You were mad that I didn't life. say it was bad. Girls in Panzer, not really that good. It's uh, like there's tank stuff and that's fine. But and we, it's, more it's on that, more on life. that in the previous episode. Yeah. See episode five <laughs> <laughs> for more. Yeah. Um, I would rate this anime a four out of ten. I'd give it a six because it, it wow. I I can't it if something is like bad enough for me to not even hold my attention, it can't be anything. It worse definitely than a, didn't hold my know. attention. It held my attention, so I give it a six. Like I was, I liked the whole plot, I guess, where they were like, you know, let's go to Alaska or. <laughs> Why the fuck do I keep saying Alaska? Please just keep on saying Alaska. <laughs> okay, they just go to a, Alaska. I, I like the whole idea of let's go to Alaska and have a journey. I think a cooler idea would have uh, them getting there and then having some major problem and like having like the Martian or something. You know, like the Martian where he has to like escape. Oh, they get like. I think that would have been a cooler show. Um, I think the only way I would have really enjoyed this if it was just a movie about them going to Antarctica. You cut out a lot of the character drama, cut out all the slice of life segments, except the ones on the boat, they were fine. Um that's the only way I would have really enjoyed it. I I think it wastes a lot of time. I think I wasted my time watching this. Um I would have probably watched it eventually because it's so high rated and high regarded, but sorry, it's not my thing. Alright, Connor, so you said you gave this a four out of ten, right? Yeah. And you gave Girls in Panzer a 4 out of 10. Yes. Now, if you had to pick one of them to watch again... Girls in Panzer, hands down. Fuck yeah! I win! Tank, I win! My win! Great. I win! The tank battles are so far. Really a win! <laughs> I thought, I'm glad you I thought we said we didn't want to watch Girls in Panzer ever again. That was agreed upon <laughs> at the end of last episode. But if you sat me down and, like, you know... Um, Gun to head. If you clockwork orange... Uh, opened my eyes and said, "Pick your poison," and put out a Blu-ray of this and a Blu-ray of Girls in Panzer. I would pick Girls in Panzer hands down because the tank battles are fun. Also, I, I this I, I think this show is one episode longer. I believe. Uh, yeah, no, I, wait, yeah, you're right. It's this is 13, 13 episodes. Girls in Panzer is t- 12, but there's two recaps, like 12, two like 1.5 episodes. Ooh, wait, no, Connor. New challenge, you have to watch Girls and Panzer, but you also have to watch the recaps. I mean, I think the recaps are like five minutes, aren't they? Still. No, they're a full episode. Oh, they're full episode recaps? What they the are. fuck? They're, they're 24 minutes. Wow. I had to skip through, through them on Crunchyroll because I was having an autoplay, and they were, yeah. they were full episodes. Oh. Same here. That's weird. But, uh, so, ratings all, all done. It is showdown time now. All right. Uh, yeah. Go for it. Maybe Go I can it, redeem myself. Start. Okay. Oh, uh, wait, shit. Wrong, that's the wrong <laughs> word folder. <laughs> that's the wrong word, Doc. Okay. For what I'm doing for next episode, for a movie, is I'm going to be doing something along the lines of what kind of did, picking an anime film. Ooh. A recent addition to Crunchyroll, like just within the month. Uh, we are going to be watching Sword of the Stranger. It's like What's a, it about? Uh, I've never just, heard of that. Let me pull up this. Uh, where's where's that? Where's here we go? Uh, plot synopsis. The story is set in the Sengoku period. A Ronin called Nanashi, meaning nameless, saves a young boy Kotaru at an abandoned temple. Kotaru has no family. Is pursued by a mysterious militia organization from China and hires Nanashi as his bodyguard. 
Amongst the men who pursue Kotaru is a man called Rarau. I'm bad at names. A skilled warrior with blonde hair and blue eyes. He obeys an old man called Byakuren and is a member of the Chinese militia. Unlike his companions in the militia, he isn't serving any emperor and just wants to fight with the strong. Sounds good. Basically, like a samurai protecting boy. Probably good action, maybe, I'd imagine. It sounds like it would be a pretty good action anime film. It's got good ratings. So, yeah. Sounds Bones good. Studio, studio Bones. I sounds more interesting than previous. Academia thing. I have literally never heard of it, and uh, I can't even... I don't think it's on Netflix. I don't see it. So. It's on the Crunchyroll, though. Oh, Crunchyroll? Oh, you said Netflix yeah. earlier. No, he said Crunchyroll. No, uh, no, I just want to say Crunchyroll. He, he said, said Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll. I heard Netflix. Okay. Well, we're just, just, uh, just having brain Just retconned today. reality over here. <laughs> okay. It happens sometimes. Um. Okay, for my... For my anime, I am going to do, uh, this is, this is a, uh... It better not be a one. fucking slice of, slice of life again, I swear to god. It isn't, I specifically... <laughs> Please need to good, our cycle. good. Um, it is by the author Nisio Isin, who, you guys are gonna get mad at me for this, he has done the Monogatari series. Oh boy. What is that? He has done... I, I didn't think you'd get mad at that part, but okay. Uh, he did Katanagatari, which both Mitch and me want to watch really bad. Um, oh, yeah, that one, yeah. He did one. He did Vidaka Box. <laughs> oh, God. I yeah, don't know these. And he did Juni Tyson. No! <laughs> I actually had no idea he did Juni Tyson, and I picked this independent of that because I have watched the first season of Monogatari, and it's great. Um, okay, so, so what, is it? what show? It's the called the Kubikiri Cycle. Oh okay. yeah, this one's on your list for a bit. I remember. It, it, yeah, it, yeah. Was, uh, it is eight OVA episodes. They aired over a year, pretty much. They were monthly. Um, it is based on the first thing Nisio Isin ever wrote in 2002. So, it, but it's a recent adaptation. It's it's 2016. All right. So, I'm excited. I'm excited to watch this. Well, it is it is with a little like plot synopsis. Um, we're not just okay. like in the dark here. It's about two people. Okay. I don't really know that well. This is the synopsis isn't doesn't explain it very well. But basically, there is a mansion on an island, and a bunch of really intelligent people are going there, and it might be a murder mystery, but it probably isn't that much. The thing that this author does really well is character interactions and conversations, like, you know, Tarantino conversations that don't really go anywhere. That's what Monogatari is. It's just you people having weird the, conversations. You know what they call the burger in uh, Paris? Royale. Which is Royale. <laughs> yeah. um, so don't expect, like, a legit murder mystery. Expect, like, interesting characters in weird situations. So. All, all right. right. I'm on board with both of these this time. I think it'll be fun. And I'm excited to not have yet another goddamn slice of life cute Hopefully girl no, show no movie. No girls crying. None of that shit. Good. As long as no girls cry, I will be very, very pleased. But I'm fine with people crying as long as it's over some reasonable shit. You know what? I want no one to cry. I, no I think cry. that's a little too much to ask in two movies that are about murder or a movie and a show that probably invo involves some form of murder. I want no one to cry. Okay. We, we shall see. But we'll, yeah. we'll hold you to that. Okay. I'll, I'll right. forget, probably. Yeah, it's fine. All right. That's I episode. think that's about it for this week. I'll see you all. We will see you all next time we... on Digitized. Desperados.